Lot 31, welcome to example four. So in example four, we're gonna switch away from looking at sequences written with explicit formulas to looking at sequences defined with recursive formulas. So when you hear me talk about a recursive sequence, all right, a recursive sequence, it's still a sequence, meaning it's a list of numbers separated by commas, but it's a sequence in which each term after the first term or potentially after the first few terms, is defined as an expression involving the pre previous term or terms. So for our starter example, for example four here, we're just gonna do that, uh, or we're gonna use just, it's defined in, in terms of the first term, and then each term after that is an expression involving the previous term. So we're gonna ignore the plural version of this until we get to example five. So for example four, our recursive sequences are going to be sequences in which each term after the first term is defined as an expression involving the previous term. So let me show you what that, that plays out to be, or how that plays out to be. So this says find the first four terms of each sequence defined by the recursive formula. So you see I have a starting point, and you'll always have a starting point. They're telling me right here, a sub one is two. All right, so here is my first term. And you have to be given a starting point when you're talking about recursive sequences, right? So again, a recursive sequence, it's a sequence in which, sequence in which each term after the first term is defined as an expression involving the previous term. So you have to be given that first term. All right, so when n is one, when we're talking about the first term, a sub one itself is two. For every term after that, as soon as n is greater than one, meaning n is two or three or four, we're gonna follow this sequence out. So if this is the first term and we want the first four terms, I'm being asked to find a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four, and I was already given a sub one. So let's try and find a sub two using this recursive formula. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write two wherever I see n, because I want the next term two. So this will become a sub two. This will be equal to three times a sub two minus one, and then I have this minus one. So if I follow this formula out, I have three times a sub two minus one and then another minus one, right? So if you see me doing the substitution, since I want a sub two, I'm plugging two in for n. The two drops here and then this is two minus one. Well, if we take a look at this subscript, I can look at this and see that it is three a sub one minus one because two minus one is one. So my subscript simplifies to one and what do we know a sub one to be? Well, I know it's my first term, so I know it to be two. So this simplifies to three times two minus one, which is five. So my first term in the sequence is two, my second term is five, okay? So let's just take note of that here. I'm gonna rewrite this over here. So a sub two is equal to five, all right. Now let's try and find a sub three. All right, and if n is greater than one, it says follow this formula. So if a three is getting substituted in for n, this will be three times a sub three minus one, and then I will subtract one. So this is three times a sub three minus one minus one. All right, and moving through this, this now becomes three times a sub two, because three minus one is two minus one. Well, what was a sub two? It was the previous term, right? So I'm defining a sub three in terms of the previous term, which we just found was five. So this is three times five minus one, which is 14. So let's take a step back and start to see why we call this recursive. You give me a starting point, and then you see a sub two is defined in terms of the previous term, a sub one. And then a sub three was defined in terms of its previous term, which was a sub two. So we keep recursing back to the previous term. So, so far at this point, if I actually, I'm gonna change this. If we start to keep track of our sequ sequence so far, let's keep track of our sequence. So, so far we started with two, my next term was five, the next term after that was 14. So I'm almost through the problem because I was asked to find the first four terms. So all I have to do is find the next term. So let me scooch this up so I have some space to show you this, but let's find a sub four. All right, 
So here a sub 4 would be equal to 3 times a sub, well this formula says go n minus 1, so 4 minus 1 minus 1. Well this is going to be 3 times a sub 3 minus 1, and we found a sub 3. Again, it was the previous term. That's what recursive sequences do. You go from your term to the previous term. So I'm going from, well, I have a sub 4, I've got an a sub 3 here. So that's going to be 3 times 14 minus 1. And when we take a look at 3 times 14, oops, I think i got to scooch that up just a bit more so you can see it. Excuse me. There we go. All right. Um, 3 times 14 is uh, 42. 42 minus 1 is 41. So then the last term in this sequence, or at least the fourth term, it wouldn't be the last term. I could keep on going. But I have my sequence of 2, 5, 14, and 41. And that's how a recursive sequence works, right? a sub 2 is defined in terms of a sub 1, a sub 3, a sub 2, a sub 4, a sub 3. We always go back, all right? And that was the definition for a recursive sequence, all right? Each sequence, or each term in this sequence is defined as an expression involving the previous term. All right, so let's try it with part B. All right, again, I'm starting at 5. Here is my first term. I have to be given a starting point. Now if I want a sub 2, let's follow this formula. It says as long as n is greater than 1, you're on this formula. So we're going to do a sub 2 minus 1 plus 2 times 2. All right, so this turns into a sub 1 plus 4. Well, a sub 1 was 5, so this becomes 5 plus 4, which is 9. All right, so I have the second term in my sequence. Let's go get the third term. All right, a sub 3. This would be a sub 2 minus 1 plus 2 times 3. Because again, wherever I see an n, if I want the third term, I'm going to swap out. Ooh, gosh, I just saw a typo. Um, maybe you're seeing it. I'm going to leave it there for just a moment. See if you can spot my typo. I was about to say, if I'm following this formula, wherever you see n, you should write a 3. So this would become a sub 3, but here's my typo. You see I'm leaving it at 2 minus 1? That should be 3 minus 1. So let me go ahead and fix that. This should be a sub 3 minus 1, all right, and then it should be minus 2 times 3. Okay, so this simplifies into a sub 2, right, the previous term, plus 6. a sub 2 was 9, so 9 plus 6 is 15. So I've got the first three terms of my sequence, 5, 9, 15, but again, I'm being asked to find the first four terms, so I still need a sub 4. All right, so a sub 4, let's do this. This should be a sub 4 minus 1 plus 2 times 4. All right, so let's see what this simplifies to. This will become a sub 3 plus 8. All right, a sub 3 was 15. 15 plus 8 is 23. So there are the four terms in my sequence. If I wanted to write them up, my first term was 5, then 9, then 15, and then 23. All right. And I'm going to show you how you can get this sequence built out on your calculator in just a moment, but I'm going to write this sequence here. I know I have it up here, but I'm just going to write it down here to be consistent. All right. Let me get this out of the way so it's not too confusing. All right. Now, how do we get this into our calculators? So let's flip over to our calculators. All right, a couple of examples ago, I mentioned how to get into sequence mode. I did that one on my computer, so this calculator is probably still in function mode, which is great. Let me hit mode. You can see it's there. It's in function mode. So I need to change this over to sequence mode. I'll go over to where it says sequence and hit enter to make it active. And then just remember, when you're in sequence mode, this button here will no longer pop out an X. It'll pop out an N because you're in the fourth mode over here, so it'll be popping out that fourth option, that fourth letter. All right, so if we want to get our calculator to do recursive sequences, we can, but it takes a little bit of programming. So here we go. You always keep your end minute one. Always, that's the default, keep it there. All right, now let's, let's do this one since I have the screenshots over here. You need to define your sequence, your a sub n, or in your calculator's view, u sub n, you need to make it u sub n minus 1 plus 2 times n. All right, now, your u that you need for your sequence is special. All right, I'm going to 
scooch my calculator up, and I think you can see over the 7 key in blue is lowercase u. And that's not to be confused with the number over the 5 key, which is capital U, and that, was, that one is in green. We need the little u, the one in blue. So I'm about to say my current term is defined as u sub n minus 1, the previous term, plus 2n. All right. So as long as you define your current term to be u sub n minus 1, your previous term, plus the formula in this case was 2n, you're good to go almost. You just have to tell your calculator the first term. It also needs the first term just like we did. So set that in at 5. And once you do that, if you go to your table, if you hit second and graph, you're going to see all of our sequences, our, our numbers pop up, right? We got 5, 9, 15, 23. If I had gone to a sub 5, there it was with 33. If I had gone to a sub 6, 45. So your calculator can go forever. It's awesome. But that's how you define a recursive sequence on your calculator. So just to remind you, you got to tell it your first term, and then you have to define it uh, u sub n as the previous term and then whatever your formula, well, and whatever your formula actually says. This one says previous term plus 2n. If we were doing it over here, I would have had to say that this was 3 times the previous term and not so much plus 2n but minus 1. And then my starting term here was 2. So if, if I did that for example a and I went to my table, you can see my sequence 2, 5, 14, 41. All right. So you can define recursive sequences, but you've got to remember to use your little u here in order to do it. Okay, so with that, we're gonna move to a different recursive sequence, one that involves a, a few terms that are defined for our starting point, and then we're gonna define each ex, um, continuing term in terms of multiple previous terms. You'll see what I'm saying. So let's flip over to example five and get going with that. I'll see you in a bit, bye.